Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. And Ryan Grimm is in for Crystal Ball. Ryan, good to see you, man. How are you? Always great to see you. Great <laughs> day to be here. It's always amazing to have Ryan Grimm uh, in the chair. Okay, so we've got some interesting people here on the show today. We've got Marshall Kosloff and Michael Star Hopkins. They are both going to be on the panel. Brianna Joy Gray, her and I are going to talk about the minimum wage and what Democrats are doing there. Jonathan Easley, him and I are going to discuss what Trump candidates are now running. And a special guest here, New York Assemblyman Ron Kim. He's been leading the charge against Governor Andrew Cuomo on the nursing home scandal. I'm sure he's going to have some more thoughts on those sexual harassment allegations as well. But we got to start, Ryan, with the biggest news that has come out yesterday. Neera Tandon is officially done, at least for OMB director. She submitted a withdrawal letter to President Biden yesterday saying, Mr. President, I appreciate how hard you and your team at the White House have worked to win my confirmation. Unfortunately, it now seems clear there is no path forward to gain confirmation. I do not want continued consideration of my nominee to be a distraction from other priorities. And Ryan, President Biden, he accepted that withdrawal. Let's put up his statement there on the screen, basically saying, though, that yes, while she he has accepted her request, I have the utmost respect. I look forward to having her serve a role in my administration. So it may be done for her, Ryan, in terms of OMB director, but Nira is not going anywhere. Just tell us a little bit about Every, what we can learn from this situation. You were on our show yesterday saying the White House isn't actually fighting for this. What can we take away from what happened here? Right. And yeah, as, as you know, my, my favorite thing to do is to you know go out on a limb with some reporting and then be proven <laughs> right very quickly. There's no, no, no greater feeling in, in, in journalism or punditry than that. And, you know, as she says in her statement, you know, she thanks them for the, the, you know, the fight that they put up for her. Uh, but that wasn't how it actually went down. You know, I think, you know, by the end of the first day of her nomination, it, it had become clear to the White House that they had miscalculated with the with the Neera Tandon nomination. You know, they legitimately believed that choosing Tandon for this role was throwing a bone to the progressive wing of the party. If you remember, it was either Tandon or Bruce Reed at the time. Bruce right. Reed, co-founder of the DLC, notorious uh, deficit hawk, and, and one of Biden's best friends and closest associates throughout his career. Progressives were fighting hard against him. They said, well, here is a woman of color activist, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who we're going to give to the progressive wing. When they realized by the end of the day uh, that there was a more complicated relationship between Tand and, and the progressive wing, they more or less said, OK, well, well, we'll just see how this goes. Now, the irony, of course, is that it was not the left at all that that took down uh, Tandon's nomination, but it was the centrist wing of the party. And if you're ever going into a, a, a battle where you need to rely on the loyalty of somebody, you know, centrist Democrats are not the ones that you <laughs> want to have your, your 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 fate in the hands of. And so Joe Manchin publicly comes forward and says that he's going to oppose her nomination. And, and he cites her her, her partisan mm -hmm. Uh, approach to to politics, which fits with kind of Joe Manchin's brand. What's underneath all of that is his relationship with with Susan Collins, though, and that mm -hmm. and that's really what undid Neera Tandon. So that's interesting, Ryan. Here's the thing, and this is what Crystal and I have been talking a lot about here. While you're right, it looks obviously true. They are, they were neither fighting for the minimum wage or for right. Neera Tandon. Why did they go so all out in terms of their quote unquote support? I mean, saying we're going to fight our guts out, like the White House chief of staff making it clear this is a priority for the administration now look there's rhetoric and there's actually doing it but rhetoric means a lot in terms especially when you're the president biden and when you're the white house chief of staff and you are commenting on some things and others it was perceived in popular media that the white house was fighting for this and biden himself kneecapped the minimum wage 15 dollars minimum wage right. like two weeks ago so what the hell was going on in that particular dynamic so you have to think about what the possible uh, public responses that an administration can have. And, and this is not just the Biden administration, but every ad, every administration will say that they are supporting a nominee, you know, five minutes before they they yank that nominee, because the second that you leave any daylight <clears throat> between what your what your what energy you're putting behind, what motivation you have to support this nominee, um, 
then it, it's it's over for that it's it's fully right. over for that person you know and they and they and they have to withdraw and then you have to have plans for what's going to happen after the withdrawal they had long said that they were going to give a role to Neera Tandon, uh, an unconfirmed role, it, you know, if she didn't get her confirmed role, which itself was actually a a signal to the press that they were not fighting tooth and nail for her to get a confirmed role because you don't give an exit option if if you're fighting that hard for that. But they hadn't they hadn't yet found one, and, and so it was an abrupt departure. The the departure came after Murkowski told the White House that she wasn't going to be supporting. Uh, th- she wasn't going to support Tannen, and so there wasn't a path to her to get confirmed. But the White House had not yet, you know, and has not yet come up with a position for her because it's tricky. You know, it can't be uh, an ambassadorship because that requires Senate confirmation. Right. It can't be a, to- a top level HHS position because that also requires confirmation. C- c- you know, typically you would uh, give a person like Tannen, uh, you know, some type of, uh, you know, assistant to the president role. But, you know, she is a high profile figure and, and those are often reserved for people uh, that are kind of in a, in a medium tier of the party. So, you know, there are turf issues to con- to consider when you're mm-hmm. when you're tr- when you're offering her some type of unconfirmed White House role. So that's going to be a really difficult thing for them to sort out. And so they hadn't they clearly haven't sorted it out yet. And so then, until they have settled on their strategy, they have to say to the press, well, they don't have to, but they they you know, administrations do say to the press, you know, we're fully committed to this happening. And you see the same thing on the filibuster. People say <clears throat> that they're 100 percent committed, you know, to f- the filibuster. They'll never repeal right. it. They'll never reform it. They were saying that up until, you know, five minutes before they actually reformed it in, in 2013 for judicial nomination. So in Washington, you're 100 percent for something until the moment that you're not. Until the moment you're not. Right. Well, and it's interesting because from that perspective, the moment that I saw Biden, I think it was in a CBS interview, be like, yeah, I don't think the minimum wage is going to happen. I was like, it's dead. You know, if the president right. is like even mm-hmm. leaving any sort of daylight there, completely dead. As you said, you have to read the tea leaves here. The interesting part here was also Bernie, who you mentioned. And it, I'm not sure if he played a role in this, but he was making it very clear that he was not particularly happy with Neera Tanden, even on the very same day. Let's take a listen to what he said to CNN hours before she dropped out. Very quickly, have you made up your mind on whether to confirm Neera Tanden? Well, right now, Neera Tanden does not have the votes, so we will see what happens uh, in the future. Where, where do you stand? Well, I will make that decision when the vote takes place. All right. So what do you make of that, Ryan? I mean, it seemed, it seemed, I mean, I think he probably would have voted for her, especially if they did get the Murkowski vote, which we'll throw up there in a second. But he was making it, I think, clear. He's like, I don't, I'm not happy about this. And right. do you think that that played a role here? Well, as we now know, Biden told Sanders in the afternoon that they had heard from Murkowski mm. and that her nomination was dead. And so... There's still a little bit of reporting to do to piece together the precise timeline. It's, but it's quite plausible that Sanders, when he was answering that question from Wolf Blitzer, had already gotten the call from from Joe Biden and knew that she did not have the votes. If you notice, you know, his phrasing right now, she does not have the votes. So that that may have been based on the intel that he had gotten uh. from Biden. And then he says, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. And the we'll see what happens is is waiting for her, waiting for Nira to you know draft her withdrawal uh, request letter, send it to the White House, and make it public so that she can do it on her terms. So, it, 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 if I had to guess at at that moment, he actually already knew that sh- that she was finished. Now, if Murkowski you know had come up with some type of a deal, which we, which we now know was not offered by the White House, you know, for Anwar drilling or something else yeah. in exchange for voting for Nira then that would have put Sanders in, in an awfully awkward position because not only would he have to su- vote to support his longtime rival, he'd have to vote to pump more carbon in the air <laughs> in, order, yes. in, order to, in order to do it. Uh, <laughs> so he didn't have to uh, ultimately make that call, and I'm sure yeah. he's glad that he didn't. I, I'm sure that he's very, very happy. That was the best under-discussed part of all of us, which is in the late hours, Senator Murkowski, let's put this up there on the screen, she was like, well, I hadn't even heard um, from them. And she's like, I, they never even asked. She's surprised the nomination is being pulled. She was very clearly, Ryan, trying to game this entire thing in order 
started to get the two Alaska senators in on some Anwar drilling provisions within the budget, which, you know, it's an old Washington game, but like you said, it would have been especially ironic. Ultimately, Nira's nomination is over. Um, we'll see what she gets. Like you said, those special counselor to the president jobs are some of the most coveted real estate in Washington. We'll see if somebody's willing to give some of that up. But I think Crystal is probably very, very happy right now. It's a pity that she couldn't join us today. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, man. And we are going to have more Rising for everybody right after this.